Well, it's time to be Tuesday. Well, today's to be Tuesday. We're looking at the sequel to Waiting, Still Waiting, and this. Uh, I should still be waiting to watch this movie. I thought, hey, I covered the first one. Why not cover the sequel? Uh, I've seen bits and pieces of this. I didn't particularly like the bits and pieces that I saw. And I'm watching the whole thing. Ugh. This movie. This movie. There was very small good parts about this film. So let's talk about those very quick. I liked Kirk Fox in this. I thought he was... It was all right, decent character. I like the fact that they decided to bring some of the original cast members back. You had, you had uh, David Keckner who showed up here. Uh, I liked uh, the uh, Luis Guzman had a, you know, here and there. I liked that they brought Chi McBride back, and like I saw, like there was, you know, when it, at the restaurant, someone came up from you saw him from behind, and like. That's Bishop. And it was. I'm like, I know it back at Chiba Bright's head. And they even have Calvin come back. But that's one of my problems with this movie is it feels like well, it's one of those films, you know, they, they come up with sequels that decide to like rewrite everything that the first film did to kind of change characters up thinking hey it's not going to ruin anything it's going to ruin the first film is what's going to ruin so we got calvin so first of all this is a different shenanigans so we follow not the main character waiter but a manager by the name of dennis which is weird because i kept calling dan dennis in the first review we follow dennis played by John Michael Higgins, who I mentioned that I really liked, and fired up. Here he is boring. And they sort of imply he's just like Justin Long's character, Dean, from the first film. He's living with his mother, and they have this thing with, oh, uh, did you hear about uh, Judge So-and-So's son? And like, no, what are we doing? What are we doing? Then we get to the shenanigans, and it's a different shenanigans because the shenanigans from the first film got closed down for health reasons yep so this is that is how they explain the almost entirely different cast and how they explain some other cast members is that there's a new uh sexy hot wing joint next door called tatas and it's run by calvin but it's not calvin but it is calvin you see watching this and watching how Calvin acts in this film, I feel like this was meant for a different character. I feel that this character Calvin is portraying, that Rob Benedict is playing, is not supposed to be Calvin. It's supposed to be Monty, which is Ryan Reynolds' character from the first film. I have a feeling when this original script was, was written, Tata was owned by Monty. Because the way that he acts is just like Monty did in the first film. Ryan Reynolds. He's the womanizer. He's running around. He's, he's talking, you know, he's acting exactly like Ryan Reynolds did in the first film. Almost to a T. It feels like they spliced two characters together. They took Monty and they took some of the backstory from Calvin. Like they, they you know, they went back to the first film how he, uh, he got, he couldn't piss. He couldn't piss because uh, someone looked at his junk. And then he was at a, that party and a high school chick blew him off. And he went home and he rubbed one up. And then he decided to do better with his life. And that's why he's, you know, the manager or owner of Tata's. But to me, it seems like they wanted Ryan Reynolds to reprise his role as Monty. And wrote this for him. He said no. And so they... Decided, oh, we gotta get someone else to come back. And so they got Rob Benedict, who can be in sleazy roles here and there, but because he has to be Calvin and not some other character, had they just cast a different actor and a different character, 
maybe it would have been better. But you have Calvin, so you have to add in Calvin's backstory. And I kind of did like how he's kind of overcome that. And then they ruin it at the end by, you know, he's getting ready to leave. And he goes to take a piss. And the same guy comes in and looks at his junk. It's the same guy, same actor too. And then it starts all over again. I'm like, what, what are we doing? What are you doing? Ruin this character again. For what? I laugh. And then... And there's a couple more things I didn't like. So... That well, was a lot I didn't like, but... So, one of my biggest complaints with the first film was Nate, Nick and T-Dog. Well, here, it seems they actually tried to do something at first. T-Dog, or now Theodore, was working for... Tata's and he's changed. He's normal. He doesn't do the gangster stuff anymore. He's normal. Mean, meanwhile, Nick, not so much. Once again, played by Andy Miller. Not just both played by the same characters, but same actors. But he's still a gangster. Then he decides to change, and I'm like, oh, this is different. They're changing. But then they bring in Chi McBride, and he talks to them, and they revert back to the gangsters. And to top that off. Ooh, because I loved it so much in the first one. This movie ends with a rap by Nick and T-Dog. Shoot me in the fucking head. Just, just uh, um, <laughs> I was in the bathroom taking a shit when this happened. So I saw, I didn't really see the end end, but I don't really care. I just heard the rap start. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> uh, I was like, ugh. Really. But the biggest middle finger this movie gives is the character of Dean. They got Justin Long to come in and film a cameo as his character Dean from the first film. And they decided, well, we've ruined a couple other characters. Let's ruin this one. Let's just really fuck this guy's life up. He's an alcoholic now. And he's also taking Oxycontin. Apparently. And apparently, his whole journey in the first film is, uh, doesn't matter one bit, because apparently, after quitting, he was unemployed for the longest time, and then decided to, uh, suck it up and work at a steakhouse, where he became the manager, and then that steakhouse was bought by the company that owns, can you guess, shenanigans, which means he is right back to fuck where he started at the beginning, only now he's a manager. Which is where he didn't want to be stuck at, and why he quit in the first film. The whole reason why he quit, and that's what he is now, is the general manager, or district manager, or whatever, the general general manager, whatever. He's, a high, he's higher than Dennis, and he's higher than, than uh, Dan. Why? And the ironic thing is, because I read this, Justin Long even dismisses this. He hates the fact that he was in this movie. He hates it. He thinks it is a disgrace to the first film, which I agree. And he hates it. And I can see why. They fucked his character up. They fucked his character up. The whole point of the first film, right down, right out the window. Because now the first film doesn't matter, according to this film, because they're basically saying that you can try to do what you want to do, but you're just going to end up right back where you started. That's what that's the message that this film, this fucking stupid piece of shit film, is telling you. is that it no, doesn't matter if you try to stand up for yourself and go out and do something else, try to be better, you're just going to end up right where you started, even if you try, if you start working somewhere else, oh, it's just going to end you back up where you started. There's so much bullshit in this movie. There's so much to follow. You have, I'm going to call him Van, Steve Howie from Reba, basically playing a Ryan Reynolds clone that's not funny. And you have his best friend whose name I'll say, I don't give a shit what his name is, who's supposed to be like Justin Long, but he doesn't get enough spotlight or any character development. There's a cook named Mason who talks like this and it's very annoying, and if the actor does really talk like that in real life, I'm sorry. Uh, 
but I hate it when they... they I'm, I'm guessing it's just the character, but I hate when I have characters like that because it's annoying. I know some people, some people do talk like that, and that's fine, but if you don't need to put that in a movie if, if the person doesn't talk like that. If it does talk like that, then I apologize, but... And there's there's pranks. They got rid of the game because now that's over the other one, and Radimus tries to put together the uh, vagina game. It doesn't work. There's a scene where Naomi, yes, she's back, uh... Flashes people, takes her top off, but it's an obvious double because they only show the this down. So, yeah. And, okay, let, let's count the cast members from the first film that do come back, all right? Elena Eubank is Naomi. Chi McBride has a small cameo as Bishop. Uh, Luis Guzman comes back in a bit of a, in, in a bit part. As uh, Radimus, he's he's a little more in it than the others. Uh, Rob Benedict as uh, the merged Calvin slash Monty hybrid. I'm gonna call it that. Uh, Dan, Dean, and uh, you know, uh, or David Keckner as Dan. Justin Long is Dean, and uh, I can see why Ryan Reynolds didn't want to come back for this. This movie is shit, on top of shit, covered in shit, putting it blended with more shit. It's terrible. There's supposed to be some kind of story with... I don't care about any of the new characters that we have. I wanted more... When you want a sequel, you want more with the characters that you followed in the first one. You want more of that. But you do a sequel, none of the characters from the first film. And now, you know, you're going to, I'm going to be a bit of a hypocrite when I get to reviewing Road Trip Beer Pong because that has only one character and it's a cameo, but, or two, but, you know, but I do like where that story goes. There's actually fun, funny stuff in that film. This is not. And they actually give those characters a story arc. The new characters don't do shit in this film. And I know. The first film was about a day in the life of people who work at a restaurant. So they do that here. But it's stupid. There's this reoccurring gag that they do. Where they put a... They put a pair of tongs in the oven and hang it up. So the guy who talks like this can grab it and burn his hand on. And they do it like three times. In this film. It's annoying. It was stupid the first time. And they keep doing it. And there's just. There's a whole story with. We have to get to. Nine thousand. Dollars. By the end of one day. Or it's going to close down. But it's not going to close down. Because he lied. It's it's just all bullshit. And there there's a whole thing. Where Maggie Lawson. As gorgeous as she is. Trying off that. Tata's restaurant. Which is like a Hooters. Rip off. And I'm sorry, as gorgeous as she is, she's not Hooters, Tata's, super gorgeous like these women are. I mean, you got Danielle Ackles in there, for God's sake, or Danielle Harris, which wasn't this time she was married yet. It just, and I thought, oh, it's going to her going to shenanigans, but no, she ends up with Radimus, and she dumps Steve Howie, which, I guess that was a story line? I don't care. This movie is terrible. And if you haven't guessed it yet, this movie is going to a special place. Oh yes. Oh yes. This movie is going to fry in hell. Oh yes. Fuck this movie and everything about this movie. It can fry in hell. <laughs> Burn, motherfucker. Burn. <laughs> Well, that concludes To Be Tuesday for the week. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I've been Scotty. I'll see you in the next one. Kind of mess that up, but you know what I mean.